How's it going guys? Dragon Star Production here, back with another video, and in this edition of Dragon Ball What Ifs, we are going to be discussing what if Kid Buu survived the spirit bomb. And yes, we are talking about probably the most memorable spirit bomb of all of Dragon Ball. I remember it, it gave me cold chills the very first time watching it, every now and then it still does if I go back and watch it. So, this what if could actually happen though quite easily. Just when Goku releases the Spirit Bomb, let's say that it didn't have enough power behind it to kill Kid Buu. But in this scenario, Kid Buu was definitely injured by the Spirit Bomb, and that's where this story picks up. Goku, who is now in his base form, looks across and sees Kid Buu. Goku was in awe, but Kid Buu wasn't moving. His energy was very low. So Goku knew that they had to act quick. However, the only one that could act with him was Vegeta, who was in no condition to fight anyone in this stage of condition. Everyone else was stunned at the spirit bomb not working against Kid Buu. But finally, Shin snaps into reality and listens to Vegeta's plan. Shin is actually able to convince people and go to Earth and grab the boys trunks and goten and gohan and if that they can get kid boo before he gets back at full power there's a possibility that they could beat boo once they were so strong against super boo goku then telepathically talks to team king kai tell piccolo to come with shin and before i get forget bring some sensu beans says goku to king kai King Kai does tell Piccolo this, and right when Shin leaves, Kid Buu opens an eye. Luckily, he wasn't at full power, nowhere near it actually. Vegeta though, can't even power up to Super Saiyan, nor could Goku at this point. But this didn't stop the two from charging at Kid Buu. Kid Buu still much stronger than the two Saiyans, just throws them around. However, Goku and Vegeta was able to build enough time for Shin to arrive back with Goten, Trunks, Gohan, Piccolo, and to everyone's surprise, Spike the Devil Man. Piccolo explains when he was going to get the Sensu Beans that he came across Spike and he thought that he could do more than just lend the energy to Goku. So, Piccolo, in the midst of talking, before he could finish, Goten and Trunks rush to fuse. This is this is happens, and then the two fuse into Goten's. Goten sends power straight into Super Saiyan 2. The fusion wastes no time and goes flying at Kid Buu, head first, sort of like how Goten did with his headbutts. Kid Buu then dodges, but Goten bounces right back and headbutts him in the back. Kid Buu goes crashing down. Goten speaks, I'll show you, Pinky, for absorbing Goten's. And then outlets a big tree, Kamehameha. But Kid Buu once again reacts quite quickly by throwing a Kamehameha of his own. The blast is struggling, but it lasts for a while until Goten's blacks actually starts catching ground. Or at least they thought. All of a sudden, Kid Buu comes rolling up into a ball and nails the boys. The fusion, Gotenks. Kid Buu hits Gotenks five times while in the ball, but Gotenks responds by sending a Kamikami Ghost attack to help build some space between him and Kid Buu, which is successful besides the fact that they unfuse. It had been a long enough time for the fusion to fuse, but before Kid Buu could do anything, Gohan, in his ultimate form, was right on the attack. Gohan is actually outdoing very well against Kid Buu. His hits were way stronger than Goten's, however, this only lasted for a short amount of time for Kid Buu's strength was slowly recovering. Gohan then throws a Super Kamehameha. Kid Buu, though, catches it. 
Kid Buu then pushes the blast back towards Gohan. Gohan then eats his own blast, and he is now out of commission. Piccolo tries to fly in into the battle, but he is quickly made a full of by Kid Buu. Goku and Vegeta, tired of just laying back and not fighting, start picking themselves up to when Shin finally managed to go over there, who was scared to bring the sensu beans to him in the first place. Goku and Vegeta are now back at full strength. Kid Buu at this point is stronger than ever, but is the only but it only increased when Kid Buu actually absorbs Piccolo. Kid Buu gained no height, but he wore Piccolo's clothes. His strength was huge, way higher than what it ever was before, and Goku and Vegeta didn't know what to do besides rush in at Buu, but this doesn't work. Buu knocks Vegeta back when Vegeta screams, This is my last resort! Vegeta then lets out all of his anger in a humongous scream. The planet starts to shake while Vegeta had electricity shooting from a from the ground around him. Vegeta then pushed even deeper. Then finally, Vegeta is a Super Saiyan 3. Goku quickly realizing Vegeta's plan to power up to Super Saiyan 3. And Goku does the same. The two attempt diving in again at Kid Buu. But Goku telling Vegeta they don't have long in this form now that they are alive and not dead. Vegeta though lets out a gallic gun right when Goku says this, but Kid Buu, Kid Buu is able to reflect the attack with Piccolo's special beam cannon. However, Vegeta isn't phased by this at all, instead goes for the attack once more. Goku doesn't lay back either. He then gets in Buu's face, just beating him until Vegeta slides through and punches Buu in the gut. Buu then, after the hard heavy hit from Vegeta, spits up Piccolo in a cocoon like they were in their uh, stomach once more in the original timeline. Goku gets very, very mad after seeing Piccolo so helpless. So then Goku punches, gets very, very heavier. Buu is now much weaker, so from the hit from the two Super Saiyan 3s are doing quite the damage. Goku and Vegeta begin overwhelming the pure evil demon, Kid Buu. Kid Buu couldn't even get a hit in on the Super, on the Super Saiyan 3s, surprisingly, considered how fast Kid Buu was. Vegeta, though, starts to feel the power deflating, so before Goku could act, Vegeta built up a giant FINAL FLASH! This is unlike the Super Bomb. This completely obliterates Kid Buu. However, because Vegeta killed Kid Buu, that means Oob won't be reincarnated. But this is where Spike the Devilman walks up to Goten and Trunks. He looks down at the two boys. When he hands the Devil Might staff for the Devil Might's beam to Goten, who he sees like his father has a true heart. Goten is very confused about this, but I will go more detailed into this later on. Skipping 10 years later, with all peace, Vegeta and Goku's rivalry is still at an all time high instead of the lying low like it was before. Because Goku doesn't leave to train or he doesn't do anything like that when he gets to the tournament because there's no oob. So, Goku and Vegeta is just worried about passing each other. But then we get to the time of the world's martial art tournament. So, into the 10 year time skip, we see a much stronger Goten and Trunks because their fathers were more heavy into fighting, so they were as well. And because Goku, like I said, wanted to do more, Goten actually got more of a chance to fight and being able to fight Kid Buu woke up both of their eyes. So after fighting Buu they both realized that they couldn't depend on their fusion forever so they joined the tournament. Separately as well as Pan and Piccolo, Piccolo became a mentor to the boys so that he is going to play the Jackie Chun role in the tournament. However, before it starts, Mr. Satan reveals that he has somebody entering the tournament. This is when Majin Buu walks up. 
Mr. Satan says that Boo's going to take him home the prize money, and everyone seems like they've given up, but Goten and Trunks are quite intrigued. The young teens had a smiles on their face, ready for the tournament to begin. So because Oob and Goku neither in the tournament, I'm going to change the participants from 12 to an 8 man tournament. Also, but after so long of waiting, the tournament finally began. Goten walks onto the stage to fight Captain Chicken. This fight is over rather quickly though, Goten rushed around the ring hitting Captain Chicken multiple different times very quickly. Captain Chicken just gets absolutely, gets an ass whooping. The fight was very similar to the original comedic Dragon Ball style that we've once seen in the tournaments before. So then, Captain Chicken goes on to get kicked outside by Goten and gets eliminated. Goten wins. The next fight is a big change though. Pan doesn't fight Wild Tiger for Wild Tiger isn't even in the tournament. But he ends up fighting the boy's mentor and also his father's. This fight shows Pan great shows Pan's great potential. The fight actually reminds Piccolo of training her father Gohan when he was just a child. Pan even lets out a Kamehameha, and just so everyone knows, this is Pan's very first fight. However, this doesn't stop Piccolo from smacking her out of the ring. Piccolo is able to pick up the victory. Trunks is then matched again with Narag, who Trunks one punches out of the ring, and Trunks wins the match. But... The next match is Majin Buu versus Yamcha, who decided to join the tournament because he needed more money because he wanted to join a baseball career. Majin Buu though is just toying with Yamcha. Majin Buu uses a candy beam and then turns Yamcha straight into chocolate and throws him out off of the stage. Majin Buu wins with ease. On to the next round, the fights get a little bit more intense, the stakes are a little higher. The first match of the round starts off heavy. Goten and Piccolo both dart in at each other, the two punches are just bouncing off of each other. Piccolo attempts the explosive wave, but Goten is able to dodge it. Goten then dodges just to hit Piccolo with a Kamehameha right above his head. Piccolo is crushed as well as the ring below. Piccolo is weakened, but Goten is able to manage to push Piccolo out. But Trunks' fight was a bit more of a fight. Because he had to go against Majin Buu, who was way stronger than him. So, Trunks powers to his Super Saiyan form, but Majin Buu is still making a full of Trunks. Trunks builds up a big tree cannon, but Buu just smacks the blast into the sky. But, on the sideline, Gohan... Goten is observing as well as his brother Gohan, telling him some pointers of what he could do. Trunks then dives back into the fight as he is swinging his power starts to rise, enough to where Majin Buu was losing ground, but Mr. Satan notices this and then starts crying saying that he needs the money, that he really needs the money. So Buu then begins to get angry, he had to win this for his friend. And his power then skyrocket with a Kamehameha wipes Trunks straight out of the tournament. Now, the final match. Goten versus Majin Buu. Goten, though, looked frightened, but he said he had a plan. This was when Goten told Trunks to take care of Mr. Satan. Goten charges at Majin Buu. And that's where we're going to be leaving off in part one of what if Kid Buu survived the spirit bomb. And yes, guys, I know this took a completely different turn, but I'm going to go ahead and take, drag it on, make my own version of what Dragon Ball could be without Ooh being the next generation of savers. We're going to see what Goten and Trunks and Pan could all do as the next savers of Earth. That's what I plan on doing with this series. If you guys like it, Go ahead and subscribe to this, subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell notification to get any alerts and updates of videos. Like this video, comment down below any what if suggestions. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at dragonstars.prod and like us on Facebook at Dragonstar Productions. And guys, I'll be seeing you guys 
in the next video. I'm out.